नमस्कार हेलो एंड अ वेरी वॉम वेलकम टू सी आई टी एन सी आर टीज लाइव फोन इन इंटरक्टिव प्रोग्राम ऑफ साइंस आई एम तानवी खुराना और इस वक्त नाइन्थ क्लास के सभी बच्चे हमारे साथ जुड़ सकते हैं और पार्टिसिपेट कर सकते हैं इस हमारे साइंस के प्रोग्राम में जिसमें हम बातचीत करने वाले हैं एटम्स एंड मॉलिक्यूल्स के बारे में अगर आपके पास कोई सवाल है कुछ पूछना चाहते हैं तो हमें फ़ोन कीजिए नंबर है आठ आठ शून्य शून्य चार चार शून्य पाँच पाँच नौ अगर आप हमें ईमेल करना चाहें तो ईमेल आईडी होगा डी टी एच डॉट क्लास नाइन एट द रेट सी आई ई टी डॉट एन आई सी डॉट आई एन इस वक्त आप हमें लाइव देख रहे हैं हमारे चैनल ई विद्या चैनल चैनल नंबर नाइन पर तो अगर आपके पास कोई भी सवाल है तो हम तक बेझक जरूर पहुंचाइएगा वी हैव अ गेस्ट विद अस एंड शील बी मोर देन हैप्पी टू आंसर ऑल योर डाउट्स ऑल योर क्वेरीज लेट मी प्लीज इंट्रोड्यूस हर टू ऑल ऑफ यू शी इज मिस नेहा नेहा लहरिया मैम अ वेरी वॉम वेलकम टू यू थैंक यू थैंक यू आफ्टरनून टू एवरी Good afternoon to you too, ma'am. Ma'am, hey, uh, TGT in Science, Army Public School, Mumbai. Se. And let's go, ma'am. Se, first of all, we want to know that ma'am, atoms or molecules. Give us a little bit of definition, please. Ab, children, ko batayega. And with this, in this chapter, what is important for atoms or molecules se related, which children should know and understand. Right, ma'am. So the chapter's name is Atoms and Molecules. So hmm. today we'll be focusing more. mostly on molecules the molecular part of the chapter but of course molecules ke bare mein pata hone se pehle hame ye janna zaruri hai ki atoms kya hote hain so atoms are basically the smallest particles which make up any matter so everything that we see around us whether it's the table whether it's a pen us ourselves we all are made up of atoms and all these atoms they combine with each other and they form molecules so today we'll be focusing on molecules what are the kind of molecules how do we name these molecules how many atoms are present in each kind of molecules and so on okay so uh, let's just begin with the molecular part like you said how many types of molecules uh, there are let's begin with this yes. shall we yes okay yes ma'am so first of all before we start with the types we should know what are molecules so basically a molecule is a group of atoms it can be two or more atoms Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Any number of atoms can form a molecule, but those atoms should be chemically bonded together, and they should be held together by some forces of attraction. So, in science, we have first chapter se yehi suna hai ki particles have some kind of forces of attraction amongst each other. So, because of this attraction, we have the formation of molecules. so uh, if we look at the definition it is the smallest particle of an element or a compound that is capable of an independent existence and it shows all the properties of that substance so agar aapne atom ka definition agar suna hoga abhi 2 minute pehle jab maine bola it might sound very similar atom is also the smallest particle molecule is also the smallest particle so what's the difference between the two so the only difference is a molecule is capable of independent existence atoms sometimes they might not be able to exist independently they need to combine with more atoms and then they form molecules so this is the fundamental difference between atoms and molecules and a single molecule can show all the properties of a substance so uh, molecules they are formed of atoms and those atoms can either be of the same element or they can be of different elements so these are the main two categories of molecules that we'll be looking at today so let's jump into the first category and within this category we have different types of molecules so the first one is when the molecules are made up of a single atom so jab ek atom akela hi khud molecule ki tarah behave kare those molecules we have an example we have helium argon neon and in the end we have a picture of a crystal lattice of potassium so we know that potassium is a metal and if you magnify inside that metal if you look at the molecular level you will see all the molecules are single potassium atoms so these are some special atoms which are capable of independent existence all right so the next category is when the molecule is made up of two atoms so we have a lot of examples you can see on the screen most of them are gases so we have hydrogen oxygen nitrogen chlorine and bromine so you can see all these molecules have two atoms 
and they both are of the same element so hydrogen molecule is made up of two hydrogen atoms oxygen molecule is made up of two oxygen atoms and so on so this was the second category the third one is when the molecules are made up of three or more atoms of an element so first example you can see here is ozone we all have heard about ozone ozone layer in the atmosphere so when you look at the molecule of ozone it is actually three oxygen atoms combined together so next example is phosphorus and to make a single molecule of phosphorus you need four phosphorus atoms and the last example you can see is sulfur so sulfur molecule has a lot of atoms in it there are eight sulfur atoms and you can see it is in the shape of a crown this structure is also known as a crown shape so till now we were looking at molecules which were made up of same kind of elements but of course molecules can also be formed of atoms which are of different elements so there are some examples for the first one it's hydrochloric acid it's a very common acid that we use in our laboratories in our homes in our um, industries so it is made up of one hydrogen uh, atom and one fluorine atom so this is a molecule which is made up of two different atoms which is hydrochloric acid it is also named as hcl which is in the symbolic form okay the second example is carbon dioxide it's a very common gas all around us it is co2 that means one molecule of carbon dioxide will have one carbon atom and two oxygen atoms and the third example is ammonia that is also a very common uh, gas that we have heard about it is nh3 that means it is made up of one nitrogen atom and three hydrogen atoms now below each of these molecules you can see there is a ratio that i have written some numbers are written below that so let's take a look at what that is first ratio that is given below hcl is one is to 35.5 so this is actually the ratio of the masses of the atoms in that molecule so we know that the mass of hydrogen atom is one unit and the mass of chlorine atom is 35.5 which is actually the average of all the isotopes of chlorine atom so if you take the mass uh, ratio of the two atoms it is always going to be a fixed number so for example you can see carbon dioxide the mass of one carbon atom is 12 and the mass of a single oxygen atom is 16 so for one atom it is 16 so for two atoms it will be 32 and when you simplify that ratio you get the number as 3 is to 8 so what does this ratio mean it means that whether you take carbon dioxide gas from your home or you take it from your school from another country from another continent carbon dioxide molecule will always have this fixed ratio because the number of atoms is always fixed in a molecule you will never see that carbon dioxide is made up of one carbon but three oxygen atoms that is not possible so the number of atoms is fixed and the mass is also fixed okay so similarly for ammonia the mass of nitrogen atom is 14 and for one single hydrogen atom it was 1 so for three hydrogen atoms it will be 3 so the ratio is 14 is to 3 so ammonia gas you take it from anywhere all molecules will have this fixed ratio by mass so this is actually the law of constant proportion it says that whenever atoms combine to form a molecule they always combine in a fixed ratio by mass all right now we were looking at so many examples and we saw that some molecules are made up of single atoms some are made up of 2 3 4 or even 8 right so we have a term which is called as atomicity so it is basically the number of atoms constituting a molecule so if an if a molecule is made up of a single atom then it will be called as a monoatomic molecule if it is made up of two atoms we will call it as diatomic if it is three atoms we will say it is triatomic for four we say it is tetraatomic and for five and more we have a common term we have to we have say that it is polyatomic so whether it is 5 6 7 or 8 we use a common term polyatomic molecule so let's go back to those examples again and try to classify them based on the atomicity to see whether we are we are actually able to apply this uh, concept or not all right so the first uh, example that i had shown you was neon molecule which is consisting of a single neon atom 
So since there is only one atom in the molecule, we will be calling it as monoatomic. For the second one, there are two nitrogen atoms which are making up one molecule of nitrogen gas. So for two atoms, remember what the term was? It was diatomic. So this will be a diatomic molecule. For the third one, there are three atoms. For three atoms, the term is triatomic. So ozone is a triatomic molecule. Next set of examples I have on the screen. So the first one is oxygen gas. So one molecule of oxygen gas has two atoms. So try to remember the name that is diatomic. diatomic. Uh, the third, next one is phosphorus. So there are four atoms. So what was the term for four atoms in a molecule? That was tetraatomic. All right. And the next one is sulfur. There are eight. So for five or more, we have a common term that is polyatomic. Now I have these set of molecules. So as, as I'm, I'm going to each and every example, our viewers can try to come up with the answers on their own. And of course, I'm showing the answer after each example. So you all can confirm the answers as well. So the next one is hydrochloric acid. There are two atoms in the molecule. So for two, we have the term diatomic. All right. For carbon dioxide, total, there are three atoms. So it will be triatomic. For ammonia, there are four atoms, one nitrogen, three hydrogen. So we have to see the total number of atoms, whether they are of the same element or not. So for four, we have the term tetraatomic. Tetra so we have the name as tetraatomic. Okay. Next, I have some new examples which we had not seen before. So this is, first one is the example of methane gas. We all have heard about this methane gas. The formula is CH4. That means it is made up of one carbon atom and four hydrogen atoms. So totally, there are five atoms. So that's why it will be known as polyatomic. Sulfur dioxide, again, it's a very commonly known gas. It is made up of three atoms. So for three, we have the term triatomic. And again, for water, we have three atoms. It will be triatomic. triatomic. So I hope with all these examples, the term atomicity and how to classify each molecule based on the atomicity is very clear to our viewers. Now, moving on to the next subtopic for today. That is compounds. Okay. So whenever there are atoms of different elements which are combining together, like you can mm. see on the screen, they all are of different atoms. So when they combine with each other, we say that they are forming a compound. Mm. Okay. And the main, uh, the type of compound which is covered in this chapter is ionic compounds. Uh, before we go on to ionic compounds, I want to show you this picture. It's a diagrammatic representation just to show you how molecules exist. So the first one is showing you a balloon filled with helium gas. Mm. Next one is a balloon filled with ammonia mm -hmm. gas. And the third one is a balloon filled with oxygen, oxygen gas. So you can see based on the atomicity, how different these molecules look. So helium gas, as you know, helium is monoatomic. That means a single atom is capable of being a molecule. So you can see uh, white colored spheres inside that balloon. They represent one one helium atom each. For ammonia, you can see a combination of blue and white spheres are there. So mm -hmm. that means one molecule of ammonia, it has one nitrogen and three hydrogen atoms. So each molecule can independently exist and each molecule is made up of these four atoms. For oxygen also, you can see there are two red spheres attached to each other and these red spheres represent oxygen atoms. So two oxygen atoms, when they are uh, combined to each other to form a molecule and you can see they all are independently existing inside that balloon. Right. So I hope with this picture you get a clear idea about how these molecules exist right. around each other. Yes ma'am, uh, I would like to ask something here. So in these yes. three yes, balloons, although the atomicity is uh, different, did you use different colors uh, so that uh, the child can easily differentiate between the atomicity here? Yes. Okay. And uh, is there any other reason of using the different colors? Different colors, ma'am, it is just to um, let the students know that mm. there are different elements. So, okay. for example, you can see in this uh, screen itself, we mm. have in the second one, ammonia gas is shown. So, mm. one blue sphere is representing nitrogen and the other three are represent representing hydrogen. So, it is just a way of showing that there is one single atom of one particular element and then there are three atoms of another element. So these colors are actually very helpful uh, way of 
showing these two things the first one is the atomicity as you said hmm. and the third one is to show the um, to show everyone how many kinds of elements are there so by far i have only covered molecules which are made up of two different kinds of atoms but we know that there are so many molecules which are made up of multiple kinds of elements like we have h2so4 that is hmm. sulfuric acid so hmm. that is made up of hydrogen sulfur and oxygen Such. so in that case we can use three different colors to show the molecule so it okay. becomes a very nice way of visually learning and mm-hmm. uh, knowing about these uh, elements which are constituting the molecule okay okay i think uh, that will make the child uh, e- the concept more easy yes yes okay. ma'am okay yes. so let's move on to the next topic i already spoke a little about uh, compounds mm-hmm. so the main topic that we'll be covering today is ionic compounds Mm-hmm. um so before we begin with this all of course all of you must be thinking what is this word ionic and what does it mean so before that we can just take a look at this picture and it's actually on the left hand side you can see it's a picture of a sodium chloride crystal that is actually common salt that we use in our daily food jo namak hota hai white color ka that we use so if you look at a single crystal of that salt and if you magnify into it and if you see it at the molecular level you will see it is made up of two kinds of atoms one is sodium and one is chlorine but the question is how are these atoms stuck to each other in this kind of a crystal lattice right they can also uh, they can how can they exhibit such a force of attraction between each other so as to form this sodium chloride crystal and also you all must be noticing this plus and minus signs on top of these symbols so this is what i'll be explaining to you all today what are ions and how this or uh, how are these ions getting formed and how do they in turn form ionic compounds so let's take the same example of sodium fluoride and uh, we'll be speaking about sodium fluoride and i'll be explaining how sodium ion is formed how chloride ion is formed and how are they forming sodium fluoride so let's just look at the definition of ions so they are actually charged species they have a single charged atom or a group of atoms that have a charge on them so this charge can either be positive or negative as you saw in the previous picture the plus or minus sign so if the atom has a positive charge we call it as a cation and if the atom has a negative charge we call it an anion and a single atom can have a charge but also a group of atoms can carry a charge and when such a case happens we say that it is a polyatomic ion that means there are more than one atoms forming a group and they have an overall charge so some of you might be a little confused after all these definitions and all these new terms but as we go on with this topic you will be able to understand each and every term clearly okay so let's first see how did sodium become a sodium ion okay mm-hmm. so on the left side you can see a diagrammatic representation of the structure of sodium, sodium. atom mm-hmm. so you can see the distribution of electrons in the k l and m shells mm. so there are total of 11 electrons in sodium because the atomic number of sodium is 11 so how are these electrons distributed in the shells the first shell will have two electrons the second shell will have eight electrons and the third one will have one this single one over here so this is what i have written down below as 2, 8, 1 it's actually the electronic configuration it's a way of telling the distribution of electrons in the atom now all of us know about the octet rule what does the octet rule say it says that for an atom to be stable it must have eight electrons in the outermost shell so for sodium to gain this complete octet it can either lose this one electron or it can take some extra seven electrons to fill in the outermost shell but that's not possible so sodium atom will prefer to lose one electron so it will happily sacrifice and lose that one electron and become a sodium ion now where did this plus sign come from as we know sodium there are in sodium there are 11 protons and 11 electrons that means the plus and minus charges are completely balanced 11 plus and 11 minus so overall sodium atom has a neutral charge there is no charge on the atom okay. but as soon as it loses one electron what will happen there will be 11 protons but only 10 electrons so that means there is one extra proton which does not have an electron to balance its charge 
so that one extra proton will give the sodium uh, atom a positive charge and that is how it is getting formed into an ion mm -hmm. and since it is positive remember the term for a positive ion if we call it as a cation okay. so this is how a cation is formed and you can see now the electronic configuration is 2,8 it has achieved the octet and it is quite stable as a cation mm -hmm. so similarly you can imagine the formation of anion so when an atom is losing electron it forms a cation so that means when an atom gains an electron it will form an anion and it will have a negative charge so let's look at that okay uh, so you can see here uh, Ma'am, yes, ma here, uh, how are the students going to learn the electronic configuration of these atoms? Electronic configuration has been, uh, it's been taught in the structure of atom, ma'am. Okay, and uh, is the process same that uh, ion becomes a cation uh, for each and every um, structure? Yes, so it depends on the um, electronic distribution. So here there was only one electron which was extra. Hmm. So it was happy to lose that one electron. But in a case where there are two or three atoms, uh, electrons extra, so it will lose those two or three and gain a charge of plus two or plus three. So depending on how many electrons is the atom losing, the magnitude of charge is decided. Okay. All right, yes, ma'am, ma uh, we have last one minute left. So I would like to uh, ask you to please conclude the program. All right, okay. So um, I'm not going to continue this topic further because it will require more time. Hmm. So let us just uh, revise what we have learned in the previous topics today. Hmm. So basically today we learned about the types of molecules that are making up, uh, types of molecules that are made from atoms, whether they are of a same element or different elements. And based on the number of atoms, we learnt about the term atomicity and we saw how can we name uh, the atomicity of different molecules. And just to conclude, I can show you this table so that you all remember the terms. So for one, mono, for two, it's di. For three, it is tri, for four, it's tetra. And for more, we say that an a molecule is polyatomic and I hope with the help of those examples all of you are clear on how to um, define the atomicity of molecules. So probably in the next class we can continue with the formation of ions and ionic compounds. Sure ma'am, I am sure all the students they look forward to the next class related to the uh, ions. So for yes, our today's program, thank you so much for being with us. It was wonderful interacting with you and uh, you explained the concept of molecules very beautifully and very nicely. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you to all the children as well. Aap sabhi darshako ka behad dhanewaad hamaay saar judne ke liye aur atoms and molecules ka chapter hamne aaj pada. Umeed hai aapko pasand aya hooga. Kisi bhi query ke liye aap hume jab chahe contact kar sakte hai hamaare number par aur chahe to email id par bhi contact kar sakte hai. इसी के साथ हम ये कार्यक्रम अपना यही समाप्त कर रहे हैं पर आने वाला जो अगला कार्यक्रम है वो है अंग्रेजी का कार्यक्रम क्लास नाइन्थ के सभी बच्चों के लिए और जिस विषय पर बातचीत होगी वो होगा पोम ऑन किलिंग अ ट्री सो प्लीज स्टे विद अस एंड डोंट गो एनी वेयर कीप ऑन वाचिंग ई विद चैनल्स एंड विद दिस जस्ट वॉन्ट टू पास ऑन द इन्फॉर्मेशन दैट एन सी बुक्स फॉर दिस न्यू अकेडमिक सेशन टू आर अवेलेबल थ्रू आउट द कंट्री नाउ Either you can purchase them directly uh, from the sales counter. The timings are 9 to 6 p.m. And uh, or you can simply download the PDF version with the help of NCRT, Deeksha or Epart Shala website or their mobile applications. Apart from this, you can also uh, place an order by sitting at your own house and uh, the website would be ncrtbooks.ncrt.gov.in. Thank you so much with this information. We are wrapping up this particular program and uh, have a nice day ahead. I'm Tanvi Khurana. I'll take a leave of you. Namaskar.